Hi, it's Ted Patterson from Critical Path Training. In this 5 Minutes to WoW seminar, we're going to look at building calendar tables in Power BI Desktop. Now, I'm going to start with one of the things that we use in our Power BI Bootcamp training course. We have a project and we built a data model, and this data model is from an OLTP style database. Now, let's say that we don't want to add a calendar table. We just want to use the fact that the sales table has a purchase date. So let's go ahead and take purchase date and we'll take sales revenue and we'll add it to our table visual. We'll take purchase date and Power BI Desktop does this really neat thing. It takes the purchase date and automatically calculates the year, quarter, month, and day for each one. So one of the things that we can do is to use this feature to quickly get calendar dimensions in. And I'd say this is an awesome, great feature for really lazy people. What we really want to do is take more control and create our own explicit calendar table. So let's go ahead and hide purchase date so we never use that in our reporting. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to click on new table and using the DAX programming language, we're going to create a table dynamically. Now you can use calendar auto. Calendar auto is a simple function. The problem is it looks at every single date field in all your tables and we have a customer's table that has birth date. So what we see is that starts the calendar table at 1918. Yeah, not really that handy. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the calendar function. And at first, let's just go ahead and hard code in the dates. So I know that my data runs from 2012 to 2015. And so if you've created calendar tables before, you know that need to start at the first of the year and end at the last of the year. So now that we've created this calendar table, it works OK. The problem is, what if I import data later on down the road and I have some sales data that's before the first of the year 2012 or after 2015. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create the calendar table dynamically by looking at the exact field, which in our case is the purchase date. So if I take the min and max of the purchase date dynamically, I get a calendar table that's absolutely perfect. We import more data, we spill over to the next year, and it automatically takes care of itself. Now with this particular calendar table, you get a date column, and I'm going to go ahead and format that. Now let's start adding the columns that we want. So year's pretty straight ahead. Let's go ahead and add a column for a quarter. Once again, we're going to really leverage the format function inside of DAX. And so I can have Q. Now instead of just having one, two, three, four, it's probably going to make more sense to have a Q and then whatever the year is. Uh, you'll do plenty of what I just did there to click on the wrong thing and have to recover inside the DAX formula bar. We'll all get used to it. Okay, let's go ahead and now that we have our quarter inside there, let's go to month. Now month is going to introduce this new complexity. And the complexity is that when we have months, January, February, March, they sort alphabetically, which is incorrect because we want them to sort chronologically. So once we create the month, we're going to create a second column called month sort. And the idea is you want to create a column that sorts alphabetically and chronologically at the same time. And then you can figure that as the sort column. We'll go ahead and hide all the columns that we're generating just for sort columns inside here. Okay, great. Now let's go ahead and add something a little bit more tricky, month in year. We want to have the month without the year attached so I can see how I did in January across the board. Okay, now just like ye, uh, month, we're going to have to create a sort column. So we'll create the month and year sort column. We'll go ahead and configure that. We'll go ahead and hide that. Now let's get a little bit more advanced. Maybe we'll have the uh, day in week. And when we create day in week, we're going to use format and we're going to use the code of D's inside there. You know, let's go ahead and put four D's inside Sunday, Monday. Now, one problem I see is that you want to use the three DDD, not the four, because then you get dates that have a consistent width, which work much better in charts and tables inside there. Now, also when we have day and week, uh, we want to have a sort column and I'm using weekday and passing two as the second parameter. So it's based on Monday as the first day of the week. Next, we go ahead and we add our date table into the model. We go ahead, create a relationship on it and bada boom, we can go ahead and start using our date table and so here, let's go ahead and create a matrix with the columns based on year and week. We can basically mix and match, move things all around inside there. Okay, let's go ahead and create another one. And we have month and year, uh, and we'll put sales revenue down there. And so notice that with my matrix, years across the top uh, or years down the rows, you know, either one is going to work just fine. So now we've created a day table. We can use it all we want inside there. One more little plug. 
Make sure you check out Critical Path Training at www.criticalpathtraining.com. If I drop down our courses menu, uh, you'll notice that our very first course, Power BI Bootcamp, is the one you want to look at. And if you're into Power BI and you want to get really good, go ahead and check out our lineup because we think within the industry, we definitely have the most intense hands-on training experience for people that really want to get up to speed quickly.